Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 6th May 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. However, if you would like to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help you in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About Us menu. Let's begin with the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is for, not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at technical charts of several commodities, Indian Global Index, Nifty, and few Forex symbols. We will look at SPY, QQQ, and DIA through technical charts before moving into broad market sector and industry analysis through graphs and ranking and heat map table. We will go through few of the trade ideas shared in our community since our last class, look at potential trade opportunities for the upcoming week, and we will have Q&A throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask questions and I will try to answer them as I go along. Let's move to live system now. We start with US oil. In US oil, our last trade opportunity was a short trade when it came up to the memory resistance line and declined from there with a bear release signal. If somebody had traded using the bear release signal when price went down from the memory resistance that turned out to be a profitable swing trade opportunity. It was not a standard Q trade setup because when the bear release signal came at that time, it was not accompanied by heavy activity However, an alert trader who was watching USO regularly could use his insight of the symbol to take a short trade at almost the very top of this swing. At the right edge of the chart, US oil has fallen a lot. One day prior to Friday, Thursday, it declined with extreme heavy activity and next day it went up slightly though it closed inside Thursday's bar. There is no bull release signal and there is no memory support line at the right edge of the chart. If we look at the weekly chart using backdrop template, we see that price is at or near multiple watermark support level. Price came down below one of them, if it goes back up from here, or if it goes down a little bit and then goes back up, then it will create a false downside breakout. And if at that time risk is small, then one could look for a swing long opportunity in US oil. Now we look into gold using the GLD, gold ETF. In gold ETF, the last possible trade opportunity came when price came to the top of the swing and displayed a bearish headwind signal. Again, it was not an ideal superior profit trade because this particular candle had a lower tail. So a trader who found GLD on that day using sonar suddenly would not enter the trade. However, if somebody was tracking gold regularly and started having a feeling of how it is moving, could have used this bearish headwind signal 
or a subsequent day's fall to take a short trade. Like US oil, gold has fallen a lot on the right hand side. It has a support memory, but price hasn't come to that level yet. At the right edge of the chart, traffic light is red, that is bearish. It is stretched to the downside, shown by the red dot below the candle, and it is clearly still in downtrend. So there is no long opportunity right now in gold at the right edge of the chart. Because there is a support memory somewhat below the current price, if price comes to that level or near that level and turns back up, it may give us a swing bounce long opportunity. If we look at the weekly chart, weekly had displayed a bearish headwind and daily also displayed a bearish headwind earlier. The weekly memory support is further away. If price reverses in the daily chart around the 115-16 level, that will coincide with this low in the weekly chart, which is also at the 115-16 level. So one may keep an eye on gold to see if it comes to this low in weekly and tilts back up, which will be at the same time that it will bounce up from the support memory level. Let's look into Indian Nifty futures because Nifty is the broad market index itself. We will not use relative performance indicator for this chart. So I deleted that. In Nifty, the last possible long opportunity could have been at this cyan candle. I am not sure how the weekly chart was there. If there was bullish candle in the weekly backdrop template, then the cyan candle could have given a long opportunity, especially for a trader who is following Nifty regularly. At the right edge of the chart, if we look at the weekly chart, it has displayed a bearish headwind. The candle itself is somewhat indecisive with both upper tail and lower tail. Nifty is at a very high level. The next watermark resistance in weekly is some distance away from Friday's closing price which is uh, around 9,000. In the daily chart at the right edge, it has displayed a bearish release signal. It is close to the watermark resistance level that was created by the bearish headwind earlier. I had posted a topic in the traders community saying that if price could go below the watermark resistance level on Friday, then it could constitute a false upside breakout where price tried to go up above the watermark level but failed to stay there and closed below the watermark resistance level. That didn't happen, so there was no trade signal on Friday's close. On Friday, price went down with high activity, not very or extreme high. On Monday, if price starts falling down, then one may keep an eye on the real time fine tune chart. And if there is a low risk trade opportunity on the short side, that is using bear release or early range breakout, one might take a short position using fine tune, book some profit quickly, if profit is there and hold the remaining position overnight. Let's look at Sing dollar. Last week we had mentioned that price was moving in narrow range along the white very slow direction line and those narrow range sideways areas are exit points for superior profit traders not entry point. So we would not be taking any trade we would be waiting for price to either go or up or down and then give us a trade opportunity at a high or low point. 
so we try to implement the strategy of buy low sell high or short high and cover lower by trying to entering the trade at swing highs or lows so in this case sing dollar went up there is a watermark resistance level which was created by the bear release signal if price goes above that or near that and tilts down with a bear release signal it might give us a short opportunity in case of forex activity data is not reliable thomson reuters i think being the most reliable among all the platforms still we may not expect very or extreme high activity and therefore while applying the sideways trade setup that is box trade setup or bounce trade setup we may not expect to have very high or extreme high activity we may use those trade setups with caution at the right edge of the chart at present there is no trade in sing dollar let's look at euro usd in euro usd the last trade setup was at this cyan candle which had hit the memory support line and went up and also displayed a bull release signal in the weekly chart at the same point it had come to the memory support line and bounced up from there that was a swing long opportunity that worked well at the right edge of the chart price is overstretched shown by the dot on top of the candle it is already at the upper boundary line which are swing long, long exit points not entry points so we will not be entering any trade at the right edge of the chart also in the weekly chart price is right at the memory resistance line so if we are looking for potential trade it may be a bearish trade if we have a bear release signal in daily price tilts down from here which will mean that price is reversing from the memory resistance line in the weekly chart let's look at australian dollar for australian dollar the memory resistance lines keep working again it came back to the memory resistance and precisely reversed from there for a swing trader there was no trading opportunity because by the time the magenta candle formed by the end of the day price was too close to the lower boundary line however alert forex trader would have noticed that price is coming to the memory resistance line and use fine tune template to take the short trade very next day at the upper end of this long bearish candle and make significant profit from there at the right edge of the chart price has a bullish ca shape candle with a long lower tail the traffic light itself is bearish red color there is no standard q trade setup at the right edge of the chart in the weekly chart memory support line is quite some distance away from current price if price could come down to that level and either give us a fake downside breakout or bounce from that memory resistance level then we could look for a long trade at that time now let's move to us market we look at spy s p 500 spy was moving in narrow range for a few days and then on friday it went up broke the watermark resistance level though it is still inside the all-time high watermark resistance level it hasn't been able to breach that on friday price went up with a bullish shape candle lower tail and also hollow body activity was low in the weekly chart with backdrop template price remained above the memory support line and just as in the daily chart just below the watermark resistance level price is already overstretched or overbought at the right edge of the daily chart 
so we will not be taking any long trade and there is also no standard short trade setup in the chart if we are looking for potential trade then we may look for a move above the watermark resistance level and then for price to come back down immediately with a bear release signal thereby giving us a fake upside breakout and then we may look for a sideways box trade setup opportunity let's look at dia dia chart is similar to spy it was moving in narrow range for a while on friday it went up though the candle color still remained neutral that is yellow it is inside two watermark resistance levels dia is weaker than spy as we can see from the relative performance line tilting down just like spy though price went up on friday activity was small in the weekly chart price has a bullish shape candle but it is inside the watermark resistance level if we are looking for a trade opportunity we may look for price in the daily chart to go up and then till down with a bear release signal thereby giving us a box short trade opportunity qqq had been the strongest of the three and it continues to be the same it made a new high last week in the daily and the weekly chart weekly is again overbought same is daily friday's candle is bullish activity is small but larger than dia and spy at the right edge of the chart we will not have any trade on the long side price is already overbought and there is no setup for short trade if we are looking for a trade opportunity then we may look for price to either tilt little bit down come to value area and go back up giving us a swing long go with flow trade opportunity or we might wait for price to till down giving us a short trade like headwind trade opportunity if that headwind signal comes on the short side it looks that dia or spy will give us an opportunity before qqq does so let's now move to broad market sector and industry analysis for broad market we look at the nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly chart and three pairs of internals new high low the number of stocks making new high minus those making new low advanced decline the number of stocks going up minus those going down and up down volume total volume of all stocks going up minus total volume of all stocks going down in terms of the indices it continues to be bullish in the weekly chart showing higher high and higher low for both nyse and nasdaq composite index the internals continue to be weak relative to indices it is not able to make new high at the right edge of the chart for all of the internals it is making high however it is lower than the high made at previous index highs at the right edge of the chart the candles are both bullish in nasdaq and nyse all the six internals went up and closed above zero so all the internals are bullish in this particular way and of course the indices continue to be bullish this broad market analysis is to be used only for long term investment because it is using weekly chart and also using only broad market index is not to be used for swing trading or day trading purpose for sector performance we look at three time periods for the 10 broad market sectors across last five days shown by the red bar five days prior to that shown by the blue bar and 10 days prior to that shown by the green bar together they constitute 20 days or about one month 
of performance for the sectors. In this week, telecom and energy continued to perform poorly. They both ended negative and they are the biggest decliners in this week. Technology was the biggest winner. Many other sectors gained other than technology, but the gains were muted compared to previous week. As we can see that the red bars are relatively smaller than the blue bars, showing that the last five days gain was smaller than the gain of the week before. If we look at the 10 best performing industries of last week, we see that renewable energy and electronic office equipment are two of the best performers going up by 20% and 19.2%, 19 and 20% respectively. These are very large gains for one week. And we had already identified these two industry groups in last week's market roundup. So if anybody was watching the stocks in these two industry groups, they might have booked some profit in stocks in these two industries. In general, the strongest 10 industries gained by large percentage between 7.6 to 20.5. These are sizable gains for one week for one industry. In terms of the worst performing industries of last week, we see six out of 10 week performers are related to metal mining and energy. These groups related to energy and metal mining basic materials have been weak for quite long time. We will see that from the heat map and ranking table also. And those watching the industry ranking and heat map table could have some very profitable trade in these industry groups. The losing industries also lost by big percentage, but still they are smaller than the percentage gain of the winners. We also look at the industries with biggest rank improvements. And in this week, in spite of a large number of negative media news on airline industry, it actually went up strongly and became the biggest rank improver. That is the reason again that superior profit traders don't look at news to decide on trade direction but trust their own eyes looking at the key charts and also sector and industry analysis to take trade. So if we were looking for airlines industry stock trade, we'll be looking at long trade last week instead of short trade. Apparel retailers continue to perform well. We had a bullish call on LD that closed with profit target one week ago. Renewable energy equipment continues to be strong, shown by the rank improvement again. And we had a bullish thought on first solar. If anyone traded first solar using that analysis, that trade worked very well. I think it went up by about 20% in four trading days since the trade idea was shared. It was not a standard Q trade setup. However, based on the industry analysis and the Q chart signals, if somebody was watching the stock regularly, could have entered a long trade on fast solar. For industries with biggest rank declines, home construction continues to do poorly. I think Enamul mentioned it two weeks ago, and since then, the home construction is continuing to decline. Broadcast and entertainment decline. We had a short call on CBS, a media and broadcasting company. That trade also hit the profit target. And computer hardware is also one industry that is continuing to decline. In this week, there is no visible flip flop between industries. That is one week going up, one week going down is not visible anymore. It had been reducing in past couple of weeks. And this week, it is hardly noticeable. Now we will look at the industry and sector heat map and ranking table. Every week we analyze the 10 broad market sectors across eight review periods. 
from last five days, last 10 days to last six months, assigning the rank one to the best performer in each period, 10 to the worst performer in that period, and apply a heat map cyan to the best performer, magenta to the worst performer, and a color gradient to all the sectors in between. This gives us a heat map and ranking table by looking at it, we can know which sectors are strong. In this case, we can see clearly technology is strong across all the review periods. Now with a rank of one in past week, telecom is very weak. It has become 10 ranking sector now, but it had been weak across all the review periods. And energy is also performing poorly. We saw some of this from the industry graph analysis also, and the heat map ranking table shows the result across multiple review periods. The analysis that we do for the sectors, we do it at a much more detailed level for the 160 industry groups. And we look for trading opportunities, swing trading opportunities or long-term investment opportunities using this industry heat map ranking table so that our trades are aligned with what the industry is saying. So we align the Q charts technical analysis with the industry analysis. How we do so? We saw that electronic office equipment is doing well. We saw that in industry graph analysis and we can see it clearly from the heat map ranking table. Its color was magenta earlier and now steadily turning cyan across one month, 10 day and five day period. So if we are looking for a swing trade opportunity in electronic office equipment, we will only like to take a long trade. Even if a stock is showing bearish sign, we'll ignore that. And we we'll look for a stock in electronic office equipment, which is showing bullish sign. It may be a go with flow long trade setup, box trade setup or another trade setup but we like to take only long swing trade in electronic office equipment at this point. Similarly, for renewable energy, we can see it was worst performer. Actually, it was between 150 and 160 rank for many, many months. Now it is showing steady progression towards cyan color. Last week also it was ranking one. This week also it is ranking one. So in renewable energy equipment, first solar is one of them we would like to take only long position for swing trading or for long-term investment. On the other hand, if we look at the tire industry group, it was strong earlier, cyan, but it turned magenta and deteriorated in rank from 21 to 107 and 107 to 126 in last two review periods. So if we are taking a trade in tire companies, then we will like to take only in the short direction. If we look at apparel retailer, it was bearish for long time with magenta color. Then it improved rank from 111 to 99 and from 99 to 21. We had already identified some trade in this group like L brands, which worked well. It was performing poorly for long time. So one might look for either long term or swing long opportunity in this industry group. Let's now look at some of the trades that were shared in the community. For Nifty, as I mentioned during Nifty chart analysis, I had posted an idea earlier on Friday saying that if price was able to go below the watermark resistance level, then it might give us a short opportunity. But we saw in the Nifty Live chart on Metastock that price actually didn't close below the watermark resistance level. So we will not be considering any short trade right now. Tesla bear release short trade. I shared this trade idea when Tesla was at all time high. And on that same day, one expert 
from a company commented on CNBC that Tesla is all about future and not about earnings, implying that it is going to go up. When I look at the actual data, Tesla's revenue increased. They just announced quarterly result at that time. Revenue increased, but earnings went into negative. The previous quarterly earnings was positive. So in terms of fundamental, Tesla was weak right after earnings. And in the Q chart, it was looking bearish to me as well. Using our at a glance layout, where we look at weekly backdrop on the left hand side, and daily hop on on the right hand side. I saw that there was a bearish headwind in the weekly chart and the candle shape in weekly was very bearish with a long upper tail. In the daily chart, price tried to go above the watermark resistance level created by the headwind signal, tried to go up but came down below the watermark level creating a false upside breakout and the candle traffic light had turned red. This is the chart as of the earnings announcement. Earnings announcement happened after market close. So based on the chart and the fundamental information, I shared a bearish trade idea on Tesla. And in the long run, Tesla may go up. It is a innovative company. It may go up, but we are looking for a swing trade in Tesla and next day, price came down by 10 a.m. The trade had 4.5% profit using stock and as swing trader, one might start booking profit or at least protect profit from that point onward. I shared that also in the community and I noticed there was a support memory. So I was not willing to hold it for a long time because there was a chance that price will hit the support memory and tilt back up. Let's look at Tesla with Metastock live chart now. And we can see at the right edge of the chart, price indeed came to the memory resistance, almost touched it and went back up. That is why in superior profit way, we respect this very intelligent memory support and resistance line. Don't take a short when price is too close. And if we already have a short trade, when price comes near the support line, we book profit at that point. Let's look at gold. It was again a keep in view chart. When I shared the snapshot, I mentioned that price was resting just on top of the memory support line in weekly. In daily also, it was resting just on top of a memory support line. So I mentioned that if price tilts back up from there, it may give us a bounce long opportunity. However, it didn't tilt back up and therefore there was no confirmed signal to go long. We already went through gold chart as of today, so I will not go through that now again. In this way, what we do, we keep tracking the movement of a few symbols and then enter it in anticipation using fine tune chart if we want or enter it as swing trade at the end of a day when the signals are confirmed. I had shared a trade on CBS. This was a media company. And I saw that time, this snapshot is as of the time I posted the trade idea. It was strong cyan in terms of industry ranking and heat map table. And it was starting to weaken changing color to magenta. And in the chart, using at a glance template. I saw that weekly had bearish color for successive weeks after the bearish headwind signal. And in the daily chart, it was having lower high, lower low. At the right edge, price was magenta. Relative performance was tilting down. Give us a unambiguous go with flow short rate setup. I had shared it at that time. And after a few days, one, two, three, four days since I shared the trade idea, it hit the lower boundary line. That is our profit booking point for swing short trade and profit was booked. First solar, I mentioned it during the industry graph analysis. 
I posted it in April 28th. I noticed that renewable energy industry was continuing to rank poorly. But fast solar at that time made higher high, higher low in daily and there was no resistance memory nearby. So the chart at that time looked bullish to me. I discussed it in one of the weekly market roundups and price was already at upper boundary at near the yellow declining direction line. So I was not suggesting going long at this point unless somebody was watching the stock regularly starting to have a feel looking also at the weekly chart when there was a bull release signal and the candle turned cyan after a long time. And it was also giving a false downside breakout in the weekly chart at that time. There was no standard Q trade setup, but the chart was bullish based on the analysis on the Q charts. And since the first post, price went up strongly, hit the memory resistance, and on Friday made a candle shape that is mixed, which has a hollow body, but an upper tail. Overall, of course, it is bullish because the closing is much higher than previous days close. So we have to tell finally that this Friday's candle is very bullish, but it has an upper tail as well. Again, we can see that price hit the exact memory resistance and tilted down from there. That is how even on a very strongly bullish day, an alert trader could take a short trade on fast solar right at the very top day trade and make significant profit from that. There was a quiz, will AAPL give a day trade short opportunity? I posted in the quiz playground and let us review again how we take day trade long or short. For entering day trade, we like to align more and more edges to our trades favor just like we do in case of swing trading and long term investment. For swing trading and long term investment, we use the sector industry ranking heat map table to align more edges to our trade, but those are not useful for day trading. So for day trading, we identify the trade in three possible ways. One is use daily chart. To decide direction. So if there is a memory resistance and price is coming near to that, like in case of fast solar, then we will be watching the chart on fine tune real time chart. And as price comes to the memory resistance in fine tune and tilts down from there, we will be taking a short trade using bear release signal. These are usually very low risk day trade opportunities where we decide the direction based on daily chart but enter the trade on real time fine tune chart. Second is look for top performer or bottom performer maybe from icon and decide direction based on that. Especially if multiple companies in the same industry group are performing strongly on a particular day. Say banking industry group companies are performing strongly from the beginning of the day, then we can find it out from icon in real time and open few of those charts in Q fine tune template and take long in the strongest of them. How do we find out which one is strongest and weakest? It is not from the percentage up down as of that time, but we use the movement relative to the Q fine tune pivot levels to decide which ones are strongest or weakest and take trade accordingly. Long in the strongest one if these are going up and short in the weakest one if these industry group stocks are going down. The third way is to watch correlated symbols and decide direction based on that. So we may look at QQQ, DIA and SPY side by side on a particular day. And if we are seeing that they are all starting to reverse after going up somewhat, then we take short on the weakest one. And if they are trying to reverse from a low, then take long in the strongest one. 
these are the three standard ways we identify day trade opportunities we don't just open q fine tune template or any real time chart and start trading we decide the direction beforehand using one of these three mechanism and then wait on the fine tune template for a trade opportunity to come up by doing that we distinguish between trade identification and trade entry identification is using different mechanism and entry is using different mechanism there is a possible fourth way and that we have described in a separate book gap trade that is an exhaustion based trade when price suddenly drops maybe because of earnings news and starts going up using the early range breakout we could take a trade in that way also so these are the four standard ways of identifying first and then entering day trade in superior profit way so if we apply that to apple we'll not simply start trading at the right edge of the chart if we opened apple day chart at that time q hop on template then we'll see that there was no memory resistance or anything at this price level around 147 so there was no way to add additional edge instead there was a memory support line also in the chart so we will not be looking to enter any short trade and because the flow color was magenta there was no chance of entering long trade also on the other hand when apple opened on that day it had a big gap down day soon after open the early range high and early range low form then price went above the early range high thereby giving us a gap long trade opportunity at this candle our stop loss will be at early range low that was never touched and we might start booking profit at the real time pivot levels red line for example or the magenta line in this case again we had achieved profit the reward the upper width that was larger than the risk taken in the trade so the correct answer to the quiz will be that we will not be looking for any trade at the right edge, but we could take a gap long day trade using Apple on this day. By the way, this gap down day was result of earnings drop and taking option trade using weekly option for such liquid stocks are extremely profitable if we can catch the move properly. Let's go back to the community. Cold trade is still on. It's one of the um, multi line retailer or broad line retailer that I identified. Let me show that. At the time I posted it, I saw that in terms of industry heat map ranking table, broad, right, broad line retailers were strong. And I found multiple stocks in this category. And I saw that Kohl's KSS is one of the strongest fundamentally. It was also being supported in weekly chart by memory support line. There was a bullish headwind that came several weeks earlier. And since then price is slightly going up in daily chart. When I posted it price formed a false downside breakout and the bull release signal came up. So I thought it is a potential long term investment opportunity as well as swing trade opportunity. I was aware of the fact that there was a memory resistance in daily. So if somebody entered it as a swing trade, we'll be booking profit at the memory resistance line. Let's look at calls today. KSA since I posted it. Indeed came up and hit the exact memory line that I indicated. So as a swing trader, one might be booking profit at these points and a long term investor will hold it for longer term. Or sometimes I book some profit at the memory resistance that is the swing trade target and put my stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from that point onward. But I acknowledge different people will have different style when exiting long term investment. Okay, let's see an update on the 
Bank of India trade that I posted some time ago as a long term investment. Let's review it. This is the last trade from community that we'll review. When I posted it in March 1, that time I noticed that price had declined a lot, then starting to gradually go up for BOI, Bank of India. In weekly, it was being supported by memory support line. At the right edge, the candle color was cyan. There was memory resistance, but there was still far enough distance to at least book some profit or put trailing stock to make the trade risk free. In the daily hop on template, price was again supported by memory support line and it was giving higher high, higher low, thereby resulting in a go with flow long trade setup at the right edge. So I posted it as a long term opportunity and of course those are swing trade opportunity also. That was March 1. And as of last week, since the time it was suggested around this time, around this time, so one of these days in daily chart, March 1, price went up strongly. It had given 40% profit by 3rd May. So in about two months, it gave 40% profit. In this way, by looking at stocks which are down, fundamentally strong, BY is a strong company. When they are down, and then starting to go up, those are the times we try to catch them for long term investment. So our trading philosophy is same, be it long term swing or day trade, always try to catch the low for long and catch the high for short. -term. If you have any stock that you would like to analyze, then you can let me know through the Q&A panel, we will look at that. If you don't have any stock to look at, then Let's try to look at some of the stocks that I wrote down in a piece of paper, virtual paper on my computer, electronic equipment. Let's go back to the sector industry heat map ranking table and search for electronic office equipment. We see that its rank is steadily improving over one month to five day period. It is either one or two. So these are the times we may look for long opportunity in a stock in this industry group. However, we don't just blindly open a stock on our brokerage platform and buy that just because it is in the appropriate industry group. Instead, we look for a stock that is giving buy signal in our Q charts as well. So let's look at few of those stocks. Let's start with FN. Do we have a long opportunity here? Please use the Q&A panel. And these exercises are very useful because we are trying to decide at the right edge of the chart. Just like I shared the trade ideas in community at the right edge of the chart, this is the right way to test our skill. If we look just at these two charts, there is no long trade opportunity because price is falling down sharply. It is clearly in downtrend. Yes, Bina is right. There is no support yet. At least that's why I said, just based on this chart, we cannot decide. There is a watermark support level in weekly around 38. Price has come below that. There is potential exertion in terms of very high activity in successive two weeks. If price goes back up below the watermark support around 38 price level, then we will have a sideways box trade opportunity now what about daily chart do we have a support we cannot see any memory line but we have multiple templates so if we go to the decision template then we see that there is actually a support that is the yearly support two this is the yearly pivot line the solid sand line is support one and now it is at support two there was extreme activity for multiple days then it weakened and on friday it turned green and went back up so there is no standard trade setup yet but if somebody is watching this stock for a while then based on this chart and based on industry analysis one might 
take a long opportunity already putting stop just below this pivot line yearly pivot line on a closing basis and try to book profit as soon as risk distance is covered so entry could have been on friday at this point stop will be if price closes below the yearly pivot and one could book partial profit maybe at the top of this red candle thereby taking profit which is comparable to the risk and may let profit run if it continues to go up on the remaining position there is no bull release signal so we will not be able to apply the box trade setup there is no standard q trade setup the standard setups are pretty conservative setup this is slightly aggressive but relies on the exertion let's look at the next stock in this industry group pbi pitney bowes what is your view on this stock here the ideal long opportunity had actually come when the bullish headwind appeared in weekly chart and then there was a cyan candle in daily chart in trade station we can align the weekly and daily candles by a vertical line let me do that on daily chart this day was the last day of the week when the bullish headwind came in weekly two days after that the candle turned cyan that could be a long opportunity for this company i don't know exactly how the industry rank analysis was at that time it was beginning of april right so it about one month ago let's go back to the heat map and ranking table one month ago it was already starting to turn from magenta to cyan rank was improving using that information from industry heat map and ranking table and then looking at the chart one might enter a long term long opportunity on this cyan candle this is similar to the long term bank of india opportunity i identified earlier we wait for a strong company to come down significantly then show sign of strength in terms of the chart as well as the industry group and take a low risk trade stop would be just below this support line below the watermark support level and since then price went up at the right edge of the chart price is too extended to the upside it is also at the declining white very slow direction line we will not be taking a long trade right now we will wait for price to come back to the value area until back up giving us a go with flow long opportunity last one in this group ncr so this is ncr what do you think of this stock of all the stocks i showed in the industry group this is actually the strongest while others had declined significantly sometimes ncr didn't decline much in the weekly chart it is still having higher high and higher low higher high and higher low in the daily chart it had a sudden drop then another sizable drop on earnings data and since then gradually going up it has a memory resistance upward unless price breaks out of that we are not going to look for any long opportunity it is also at the declining yellow slow direction line so we may wait for it to till down and then go back up that will give us a go with flow long opportunity for swing trade we may catch that and book profit at the memory resistance let's look at specialty retailer specialty retailers were weak for long time now over last 10 days it improved rank from 99 to 40 and over last 5 days it is holding steady at 41 so i thought of looking for some trade in this group let's look at tcs it's not the indian it company tcs this is a container storage group it's a retail company it is an interesting chart in weekly and as well as in daily set very long term support level both in weekly and daily so these this may be potential long opportunity with very narrow stop loss it will not be using option because it is moving sideways for many weeks call option will simply start losing value using stock it might be traded with 
narrow stop loss and see if this lead to up move from here. What about auto parts? Auto parts were strong earlier and weak in the middle. And in this week, it improved rank from 108 to 58. That's a big rank jump, 50 point rank jump. Let's look at some auto parts company. We we'll look at two of them, AAP. What do you think? In the weekly, price is close to the multiple memory support level, which also has a watermark support level. Came very close to that, displayed a bull release signal. Backdrop color turned neutral, and since then, price didn't go down at the right edge. Last week's candle shape is bullish. In the daily chart, the same decline is showing up. Price bounced up from this watermark support level, which displayed the bull release signal at the right edge, traffic light, candle color has turned green. Prices just below the memory resistance line. So in swing trading, we are not going to enter any trade right now. For long-term investment, one might look for buying opportunity. There are memory resistance line. One might wait for one of those, at least this one to be broken before taking a trip. The next one in auto parts industry is ORLY. It didn't decline as much as auto parts, but at the right edge in the weekly backdrop template, it went down with heavy activity and then came back right up above the watermark level, creating a false downside breakout accompanied by exertions. This might be a buying opportunity. In the daily chart, we can see the attempted down move, probably stopping many people out and price going back up. For a swing trading, we will not be entering a trade right now because the stock will be far away. One might wait for price to till down and go back up, giving us a go with flow long opportunity. Between ORLY and AAP, we see that ORLY is stronger. It didn't drop much in the weekly chart. So there are two ways of entering long-term investment by a stock that is already relatively up compared to peers or by one that has fallen a lot and showing sign of strength. Both are possible. I tend to prefer the ones that have fallen a lot and then starting to go up. If you remember last week, we were looking at several IT companies in India and I had asked which ones are strongest fundamentally. We could identify it very easily visually within few minutes. Identifying the stocks displaying maximum number of green color. So whether it is our industry sector analysis, key charts or fundamental analysis. Personally, I like to only look at visual information and decide quickly. Let me open my tool. So if we have a company like say ORLY. All I do is uh, I enter the ticker symbol ORLY and suppose I want to compare it with 10 PRs. I like to always know what the company does. So I have retrieved the business description of O'Reilly Automotive. Some of the stocks I know, sometimes people may send me stocks that I don't know about. I like to look at only what the company does and also look at the heat map ranking table for the industry group. Once that is done, I look at Q charts and then for longer term investment, I like to look at the fundamentals. All I did, I entered the ticker and all the PRs came up. Here I am looking for the stocks with maximum number of green rows, relatively speaking. This coloring is done relative to each other. So I can see ULTA or ALTA, what you call it, ULTA is one of the strongest in this peer group and ORLY is actually one of the strongest. And maybe HD. HD is Home Depot, is a uh, Home Depot, slightly different company. But ORLY and ALTA, 
these are both kind of retailers, but in different ways. Ulta is for cosmetics. ULTA. It is very strong uh, on, on chart also. So in my long term investment style, I'm not going to try to buy Alta, whereas ORLY was strong, but it had a drop. What about uh, our other company AAP? It had declined a lot showing sign of strength at support level AAP. So let's analyze it. Let's just type AAP. And we see fundamentally it is not very strong, not very strong. Even in terms of PE ratio, it is not very strong. Instead, in this list, none of none of the stocks look very appealing other than raw stores, raw stores, ROST. Now, sometimes to find good comparison, we may increase it to 20 or maybe 30 to compare with 20 or 30 or 40 or even 50 PRs. It will take few more seconds and all I do is look at the color coding because the hard work I have already done before in consultation with some of the very big financial experts, CFO of large conglomerate, that what are the parameters I need to look at, created a mechanism just by using color I can decide the strong companies if I look at this longer list now I think this one Ulta Ulta is still showing up as one of the stronger if I scroll down maybe UAA interestingly we already have a long term buy recommendation on UAA in our community so if we go back to our community I had shared it nine days ago because at that time the sector was looking strong. As we can see from the heat map ranking table, it was magenta earlier and then turning cyan 57, 12, 23 becoming stronger. And at that time, the chart looked like this in at a glance template. It has fallen a lot, showing sign of strength, sign of exertion, bull release signal strong bullish candle in weekly in daily it broke out of the memory resistance broke out of yellow line so for long term investment one might give a stop below the memory support and see if it goes up and we can see that now with fundamental analysis also it is one of the strongest so aap is actually not one of the strongest we can see that is all I need to do to check if a stock is fundamentally strong for long term investment. So it doesn't seem so. So one may be careful. This tool is extremely useful for me. It takes only a few minutes for me to go through a large number of stocks and decide the strongest ones among them. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you all for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a good weekend and trade profitably.